What's up everybody? It's your boy Dapper Dub here. Today we're going to be going over a video about Geo Topside. So we're going to start off the video and I'm going to tell you about some of the items you can get inside of Geo Topside. Then we're going to go into the different biomes. Then we're going to discuss five star dungeons. And after that, we're going to talk about gear progression and gems. Okay, so without further ado, let's just get straight into the video. All right, so Geo Topside. To get here, you want to push options, go to the Atlas, and you'll notice in this bottom right-hand corner, you got the Geo Topside. Now, there's Uber 8, Uber 9, and Uber 10 for Geo Topside. These require different PRs to get into, um, and I'll kind of explain that a little bit later when we talk about progression, okay? But first thing I said we're going to talk about are some of the items you can get in Geo Topside. So, first things first, you can get Glim from breaking up the grass or the rocks in here, and you'll get Glim. You can also get bombs from this as well. Two main resources you can get from here are Viridium, which looks like these green blocks here, and also Nitroglitterin, which are these purple blocks here. Uh, you're going to need uh, Nitroglitterin to level up your, your gear. You're going to need Viridium to craft a bunch of stuff. And I think you need some of it to level up your gear too. So, <clears throat> Another items you can get uh, are Crystalline Cores, which you get from Silver and Gold Rewards for completing 5-star dungeon. And also Lesser Geodian Topside Caches, which you also get as Bronze Rewards for completing 5-star dungeons. And last but not least, Crystal Gear. So you can get Crystal Gear to drop in the different, uh, different Ubers. Um, Uber 8 drops Crystal 1, Uber 9, Crystal 2, and Uber 10 drops Crystal 3, the best you can get. So now we're going to talk about some of the sub-biomes. So some of the sub-biomes, and we're going to just talk about what they are, and I'll try to kind of, I can't really show you what they are exactly, but I'll just uh, let you know that there are three different types. Um, I'll have a link in the description on uh, if you want to see what those types look like, so if you want to look in the description, uh, you'll be able to see these three types of biomes. So the first one is the Sarai Sand Sea. It looks pretty much like a flat area with a bunch of, um, there's nothing really like, there's no like plasma or anything around. Um, it's pretty cool looking. I guess it looks like it has tentacles and stuff around. I think it's the actual biome I'm in right now. The next one is called the Hollow Dunes. So the Hollow Dunes is going to be where you're going to be able to farm the viridium and the nitroglitterin it's got a like a cave like system so you'll know if you're in the hollow dooms if you have uh like a cave under under the geode which looks like a bunch of green blocks uh, you'll be able to farm a bunch of viridium and stuff down there and the last one is the weathered wasteland uh it pretty much it kind of looks like the biome i'm into it's got this uh these little crevices here so that's what the weather rest looks like those are the three biomes. Hey, it's pretty cool to have them. That that's the three sub biomes. So take what you want with it. You don't get anything different from going in the different biomes. So don't really worry about that. Uh, so next thing we're gonna talk about are the five star dungeons. All right. So the five star dungeons are unique dungeons to Geo Topside. So if you push um, your map and you bring open the map, it's the ones that look like a three-star dungeon, but they have a red door on them. Okay, so this one, for example, that's just above me uh, is a five-star dungeon. Uh, what they do is, so we'll go over to, to it real quick. You go to the middle of the five-star dungeon and you start a timer. Okay, so when you start the timer, you have just a little bit of time. Um, you, I think it gives you three minutes to beat five bosses. So these bosses can either be the cursed goals like we have here or they could be other bosses okay <clears throat> now if you beat this with a minute and a half left to go you can get or a minute and a half or more you can get a gold reward you can only get this once per day but the gold reward gives you eight crystalline cores now crystalline cores are used to upgrade your gear and they're also used to create the geode style caches which uh, you can find them in the marketplace but uh, they give you a random geode style so, you go around and you beat uh, all these, and if you beat it with a minute and a half, you get your gold reward once per day. I've already done mine today, so I'm going to end up getting a bronze reward. So we'll talk about the silver rewards next. For the silver rewards, you can beat it with any amount of time left. It doesn't matter. Um, 
You can only get it two times per day, but it gives you three crystal cores, okay? So you can get those twice per day. You can get one eight and two threes, right? So that's uh, what, 14 <laughs> uh, caches, or not caches, of course, a day. And then also, after that, every five star dungeon you beat, you get a bronze award. So the bronze award is how you're going to be able to collect the lesser Geodian topside caches. All right. So we'll go ahead and claim that right now, and I'll open one really quickly. We'll go to our claims. We'll see that way. Hey, look, we got a lesser Geodian topside cache. We're gonna end up opening it real quick. My inventory is pretty full, but hey, we're gonna open it. So these caches can drop certain things. So their loot table is you can drop a one crystalline core, pearl of wisdom. <clears throat> you can also drop multiple crystalline cores and uh, multiple pearl of wisdoms if you get the uncommon drop. Uh, forge fragments. Rarely it drops bound brilliance, and very rarely it'll drop a forge fragment formulae. And what that is, it is a legendary home that you get that you can do once a week and it'll give you a hundred forge fragments now what are forge fragments exactly right well forge fragments are used to upgrade your gear right so it's used to upgrade your crystal gear now how do you get forge fragments besides the tome well you get forge fragments from going to the loot collector so we'll respond really quick you get forge fragments from going to the loot collector and Loot collecting all of the crystal gear that you have. As you can see, I get one four to fragment for each one. And then uh, for level uh, level two and level three, you get more forge fragments. So this is a level three sword right here. I can get 50 forge fragments from it. Pretty cool. Another thing about Geo Topside is they at every single one of these uh, respawn stations, you have these two uh, quest givers, right? These quest givers, they, they're pretty unique. Um, I mean, one of them's called the pup, pup, Purple Sun Mage uh, Pebble. The other one's the Green Sun Warrior Boulder, okay? They always get the same quests, and they always have the same rewards. And the rewards is two Nitro Glittering. So, my opinion, the rewards aren't very good. I don't really do these. But one of the quests is you defeat 20 dungeon bosses in Geo Topside Worlds. And the other one is to defeat uh, five or to complete a five star dungeon so i think you have to complete a little bit more than one five star dungeon but maybe it is just one who knows uh it doesn't really matter two nitro glittering is not worth doing these quests but hey if you want to do them there they are also there are no cornerstone blocks in geo topside so you can't go create cornerstones or anything but you can uh respawn at any time and go to a loot collector and you also have a personal chest here so now we're going to talk about gear and progression and what you want to do. So when you first go into Geo Topside and you go into uh, Uber 8 and you don't have any crystal gear, you can go right here to the Sunseeker's Crystal Forge. What that'll allow you to do is to create a weapon. So this weapon here, so you can create one for each. It'll cost us 25 uh, Viridium and 8 Nitro Glittering for any one of the weapons that you need. Now... <clears throat> To get into Uber 8, what you need to do is you just have to be 5,000 power rank and there is no uh, no light requirement to get into Uber 8. So you can go ahead and get these and you can start farming your crystal gear and your dungeons. Now, at Uber 8, you can only get crystal level 1 gear. Alright? So you can't get any crystal level 2 or any crystal level 3 while you're in Uber 8. This is important to know because if you're in Uber 8 and you're trying to farm for better gear, you're not going to be able to get it. And then we're going to talk about gems, okay? So the gems you can get from Uber 8 are up to shadow. So you can get up to shadow gems. So you're searching for shadow level 2 gems. Or they're level 1 gems with 2 stars and 3 stats. Um, and you want those 3 stats to you be, you be your attack stat, which I'm a Neon Ninja, so I want to have physical damage. And then I want it to have critical damage. All right, and then I want the third stat to have light, and it'll always have light on it. When you level up these gems, you want them to roll into light, all right? Because light and dark work like this. Think about darkness, which is what the enemies have, as damage resistance or armor. And you can think about light as what you get as a stat as armor penetration, okay? So... <clears throat> 
the more light you have, the more you can penetrate their darkness. All right, so which which means you can pretty much do uh, um, the same amount of damage you would normally do without having a damage reduction. So if you're starting to fight things in Uber Nine, which Uber 9, you have to have a, a 10,000 power rank to enter, and then you also have to have 100 light to enter as well. But at 100 light, you're still not going to be doing that much damage. You're going to need more light than that to actually be able to kill these monsters, all right? Because, hey, when they have those damage reduction on them, sometimes people go in there and they're doing like hundreds of damage rather than thousands and millions, okay? Um, so make sure you have your light up. Uh, so my point was, when you're leveling up these gems, when you level up your gems to level 5, 10, and 15, you get a big boost in a gem. You want these big boosts to be in light, okay? Because the armor penetration is going to help you more than anything. You can get your other stats on your water, air, and fire gems, but you really need light, okay? So just take that as you will. If you're having a hard time doing damage in Uber 9 and Uber 10, make sure that you get gems that can have light on them and then also roll three times into at level 5, 10, and 15. So now we're going to talk about Uber 9 top side. So Uber 9 top side, I already told you the requirements. It's 10,000 power rank at 100 light. Uh, when you go into this, you, they can drop up to level 2 crystal gear. So then you can you know trade, trade away all your crystal level 1 gear and get your crystal level 2 gear. Also, they can drop up to Radiant Gems. So you're going to follow the same process. Uh, what I recommend doing for this entire process is to try to get to Uber 9 as fast as you can. And then try to get to Uber 10 as fast as you can. So you can start farming Stellar Gems, right? And then once you have Stellar Gems, you can worry about trying to get the best rolls. Alright, so I wouldn't try to focus on the rolls too much uh, in the beginning. Because you can always follow someone and team up, okay? But I'm in Uber 10. You saw me do a 5-star dungeon. I did it with such ease because I have all of my rolls in the light. And I'm able to do over 70 million damage in a hit without using a potion. So if I used uh, a martial emblem, I'd be doing 99999 max damage. So anyway, as far as leveling up your gear, I do not recommend you level up your level 1 or level 2 crystal gear at all. Okay? Uh, the only thing you want to do with those are add pearls to them. Because when you sacrifice them, you can always get your pearls back, but you can't get your nitroglidium, your viridium, or your crystal cores back. So I would definitely recommend only leveling up crystal level 3 gear. Speaking of crystal level 3 gear, where do you get it? Well, you go into Uber 10. So Uber 10 has a power rank requirement of 15,000, and you also need 2,125 light just to enter. Okay, so with Uber 9, it was only 100, and Uber 10 is 2,125, which is significantly more. All right. Well, once you're in there, you can start farming for your stellar gems and then start getting those rolls. <clears throat> what I recommend doing, um, like I said, is sacrificing your crystal level 1 gear, your crystal level 2 gear, getting your crystal level 3 gear the way you want it, and then going into Uber 10 and... I would get a team in the beginning, all right? Because it really is pretty difficult. So try to find someone you can follow or help you out to try to get those boxes to help get you your stellar gems to get you that light requirement that you really need uh, to do it. So I'm going to pull up my character sheet real quick. You may not be able to see this, so I'm going to hide my face really quick. So let me hide it. All right, so now you can see my stats. So, as you notice, I have 5,819 light, alright? So, 5,819 light is going to make me able to do significant damage to these guys. I mean, look at that. I'm just able to shred straight through them, no problem. Okay. Now. I said 69 mil. I think it's because I have a different ally on. Yeah, I have a Grim on except instead of um, Rap Berserker. Cause I'm silly. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's Uber Nine and Uber Ten. Uh, for Uber Ten, um, like I said, get a group together. Now, as far as the five star dungeon and the rewards you get from the five star dungeons, do those change over Uber Eight, Uber Nine, and Uber Ten? And the answer is no. You get the same exact rewards for doing an Uber Eight dungeon, um, minus the the caches okay so minus getting the uber 9 uh, gym caches and uber 10 gym caches 
As far as like the gold, silver, and bronze rewards, you get the same things for doing your Uber 5. So if you're having a hard time uh, beating, <clears throat> beating the dungeons and getting those daily rewards, go down to a lower Uber. Uh, that lower Uber will be a lot easier for you, okay? Um, so I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, <clears throat> the most beneficial thing you can do, though, is wait until you get your level 3 gear to level it up. So if you're wondering what the max leveled gear looks like and what the PR is, here I'll show you my set really quick. Crystal level 3 hat, you get 650 light at max with max stars on it. Um, 1300 light with the weapon, so you get more light with the weapon. Pretty cool. But it's also the PR is 1609. And then same thing for the face, you get 650. If you notice, you also get more movement speed and physical damage and attack speed as you level these up than you do in comparison to Stellar's. So when you level up your gear, it's going to cost you a significant amount of crystalline cores. And it's also going to cost you 5,000 total nitroglitterin to get a, a level 3 all the way up to 5 star. Which is a lot of nitroglitterin just for one piece of gear. So if you want to farm your nitroglitterin and help level yourself up while you're doing your geode, I would recommend that. If you want to farm your uh, nitroglitterin on Tuesdays and you have Patron, you can get more ores back when you're mining. It helps a lot in uh, and, and your progression, okay? So the big takeaway from this is <clears throat> do not level up your crystal level 1 and 2 gear. Get to Uber 10 as fast as you can. Once you're in Uber 10, farm Stellar Gems, and at level 5, 10, and 15, make sure that you get a roll into light. Once you're there, you should be having no problems with Uber 10 or at all, and you should be able to farm to your heart's desire. Also, if you want to get adventuring quests and do this stuff at the same time, make sure you go to a club that has the Cosmic Gem quest and maybe a Ganda who and the Ganda is like a magic find quest. Um, and that'll help you get adventure in at the same time. And you're just really just killing two birds with one stone. Alright, so that does it for the adventuring guide. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like for me. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me your biggest frustrations in Geo Topside. Like what really gets to you. And maybe some of your best enjoyments in Geo Topside. So let me know. Uh, I read all my comments and I'll reply to you. So don't worry about that. There's one last thing, if you do want to join the Discord, I will have that linked in the description below. Uh, you'll be able to join the community, which is the Dapper Dub community, and we talk about Trove. We also have another couple of games in there too, if you want to join and talk about those games. But hey, if you want to join a Trove community that's very knowledgeable, that'll help you out, join that Dapper Dub uh, Discord. We also have Habitat Ally Hunting and Club Quest postings, so you know what class you are and on, on everything. Also, this is compatible with the PC, PS4, and Xbox. So, anyway, do what you will with it. I hope to see you there. Oh, so, without wasting any more time, I hope you guys have a great day. Adios.